apples of the green variety. It means the basket only has green apples, period. Anything that follows includes is all that is in there, period. Would that also mean, sorry, I don't mean to talk out of yeah. uh, range. Would that also mean that the basket itself was made out of green apples or? I have no idea. The question was, does that mean the basket itself is made out of green apples? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say that, uh, that Canada is the basket and the apples are what? Okay. If that yeah, makes it's sense. the body corporate. Sure, let's call it that. There you go. The body corporate is the basket. That actually is a body that contains something, is it not? By definition. So definitions are fun. People should read them and learn them. So just you know, go, go through the Interpretation Act. There's all sorts of fun things in here. If, if you really want to go into Caesar's court, into the, the, the summary convictions, especially without knowing what you're doing, I know people are getting really fired up online, like, oh, fuck yeah, man. I'm going to go into that court and I'm going to hand them their asses. Um, <laughs> you're not. Okay, that's the scam. You're not going to hand them their asses in their own courts. Uh, they may shy away from you and decide not to be as public about what they're doing. Um, you're not going to hand them their own asses. That's uh, your best just staying out of there altogether, and that's that's the only way to win that game is to stay out of it. And if that takes a little reading to understand how and why you can stay out of it, then that's great. I mean, I even found one of my own. Uh, I was going to do my own notice under, notice of understanding and intent and claim of right kind of thing back in the day and shit, I got like this big thing ready years ago and that was when I read through it and I'm like, well, I'm like, this is kind of stupid. How do I contact them and ask them what they're claiming I can't do? And that's where that theory came from. So, I don't know. There's also, you know what, another thing people should learn is like maxims of law. Instead of me just up here on a board trying to teach people things, just download the maxims of law and read them. They're in Bouvier's Law Dictionary. Read the maxims of law. Do you know where the, where the origins of the maxims of law come from? Like they're just they're another one of those things that uh, I think the actual definition of the maxims of law are just are just a, a step a, they're well established facts. They're just facts that are so old and well established that you just don't even need to write them anymore. They're like self evident truths, is what a maxim of law is. Except they're not universally applicable. I wouldn't say they're universally applicable. No, but if you decide that that's you know that applies to you and somebody else believes that it doesn't, well, I guess you don't have agreement. Well, in particular, I think that's great. the old one, he who does not deny admits. Yeah. That works for merchants having a dispute. Yeah, it's merchant law. But it's, it's not really Yeah, and that's great, because, law. no, it's not natural law, but, uh, sorry, that was the question, is that, like, he who does not deny admits would probably only apply in merchant law, and that's correct, and that's great, because that's all government is, right? They are just that they're operating in merchant law. Period. So when you, that's why I say when you contact government and you start sending in these fee schedules and these notices and they don't reply at all, that's great. They're just agreeing with you, right? Well, that's perfect. If the government agrees with you, now when they try to charge you in summary convictions court and you just send the crown a copy of your agreement you already have with the attorney general, it says no, 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 you guys already agreed with me that this doesn't apply. Well, what case do they have now, right? And then when, you, and then when that, that crown doesn't reply to you, he's now agreed as well. So then you send all of that down to the, the, to, the, to the courts building, and if they're giving you hassle down at the courts building, and you walk up to the window and they're saying, no, you can't put that in the court file, which is horseshit, because that's the only place affidavits do go is in the court file. Um, you know, you ask them some questions about, you know, like, well, is this not a public, a public building? Is this not a public courthouse? Is that not a public court file? Are you not a public servant? You know, your job is not to tell me what does not go in a court file. Your job is to put what I'm giving you into a court file. If that doesn't work, then we got to get into some of the administrative remedies later on. Today was just kind of going to be my chat day because I just felt like sitting down and going over some, some very rough principles here that people seem to still be missing. So anyways, maxims of law. There's plenty of them online, online you can download. This is one of the first ones I printed up. Years ago, I think it's 15 pages. It's got about every maxim along the simple form you can possibly find. I went through and highlighted a bunch back in the day. Ones I thought were really nice, like uh, no one can give what he does not own. Uh, ignorance of the law excuses no one. I went through here and I just highlighted a bunch of ones that I liked, right? And so I would start including those at the top of some of my fee schedules and stuff like that. I would send off to the government. Uh, here's a great one: consenting contracts. Well, if this is all contract law. Every single one of these maxims would be a good one to know. The one I've got highlight, highlighted is the contract makes the law. Law is contract, period, because there's only two forms of law. We've covered that. 
There's man-made law and there's God's law. Man-made law is merchant law. It's any law. It's if you and I come to an agreement right now about anything, that's law between us, between the parties. So con the contract makes the law between the parties. If I'm not a party to a contract, that doesn't apply to me. That's the basis for the free man movement as far as I'm concerned. That, what is that? Five words, and that sums up everything we're trying to do out here. So when the Crown's taking you to summary convictions court, and you're waiting until the day of court to go in there, and you're going to hand these guys their, their, their asses by telling them that, you know, that, you, know, I, you, know you show me the contract. Well, no, it, it doesn't really contact the Crown in advance. And I, I love it when people now go, and I tell everybody to do this, go to the first hearing and get your full disclosure. Because in there is all the evidence you need to go after them. All the police reports, everything that they wrote down about you, uh, them confessing that they pulled you over on the highway and beat you, and whatever they did to you, they confessed to everything in the full disclosure. That is great. Thank you. You'll be hearing from me in the next couple of weeks. Oh, well, how about a hearing date in three, four weeks? I'm sure that sounds good, but you'll probably get a letter from me in a couple of days. That's when you send in the demand to provide a contract. What contract were you enforcing at the time I was pulled over and detained and beaten and my human rights were violated? Well, they don't reply. When they don't reply, what do they just admit? They must not have a contract. Right? And what is the law? Well, the contract makes the law. Exactly. So, there you go. Put that right at the top of your letter when you're contacting the Crown. The contract makes the law, right? Put little quotation marks around it and put legal maxim beside that. I don't care, get creative. Just contact these guys in advance and do stuff like this and read. This is, these are maxims of law, it's 15 pages. Again, there's the other, the other seven minutes of an episode of Friends. Download it and read it, right? In one episode of Friends, you could dismantle the entire Canadian law system. So how many people have watched a hundred episodes of Friends out there and then bitch that they, you know, that their, their, their rights got violated when they went to court? So it's kind of annoying stuff, and I just don't mind speaking my mind about that. How about commercial maxims? Commercial maxims? Well, actually, interestingly enough, there are uh, they're, they're they're actually called maxims of equity, <laughs> and those you can download as well. Um, I think a lot of these kind of mix back and forth. I mean, obviously, that maxim of law was very relevant to merchant law. But there is maxims of equity as well. And the reason you're going to want to know maxims of equity is because that's where your recourse is. So if you start contacting people with, with legal documents you're drafting yourselves, and you start quoting maxims of equity in there about who has equitable claim to something for what reason, that's going to have some standing now, especially when you start going into uh, civil court. I'm going to stop calling it Queen's Bench because we got people from all over the world that have different court systems that are watching some of this stuff now civil court. Anywhere where you enforce a contract, a civil court, wherever you sue somebody, wherever one real injured party is suing another injured party, that's the court you want to take them to. And I don't care if it's if it's Australia or the United Kingdom or Canada, the United States, just sue the government. Just sue them. Right? We're having some interesting results with that. So I'm not going to get into a lot of that yet, but uh, I will again state for the record, unequivocally, the government never replies to these. Never. They will get their lawyers to try every scam and procedure that they can find. And if you don't know how to control the judge a little bit by, number one, not allowing a crown to testify, because we have crowns now, our attorneys, sorry, lawyers for the government, who are filing motions that, to the best of our knowledge, we've never seen a signed copy of one of these motions. So they're not even signing the motions. The motions have no statement of defense. They have no claim other than trying to claim that you aren't following proper procedure in some way. So they're not attacking the substance of your claim. They're just going after procedure. And that looks really bad for them because the fact they're not filing a statement of defense, as far as I'm concerned, is, is it's an abusive process. It's frivolous filings. You're attacking my form over my substance. And I think you have standing over that anyways. So that's why you should learn, again, wherever you live, go and read the court rules. They have rules there. I think there are, there's 65 different forms. Only 20 are going to apply to anything you're ever going to be doing in the court because most of them get into 
probate court and estates and all this other nonsense you're never going to be dealing with. So there's 20 forms to follow. So you normally have a cover letter and then a form that follows it, probably with your affidavit and then exhibits you enter. And, and it's the simplest thing in the world to get a lawsuit together. I can't believe people even hire lawyers once you read how to do it. It's insane. Um, so do that, just read it. And it's all right here. And quote maxims of law and where you got them from. Uh, get them from Bouvier's Law Dictionary online. Is a court going to tell you that Bouvier's Law Dictionary is not a good legal source? I don't think so. Is the government going to come up with a better one maybe? Like maybe an agreement of the parties? No. Are they even going to rebut anything you enter into the court file? No. They're going to commit an abusive process. And as far as I'm concerned, one of the things we're working on right now is the two lawyers involved in doing some of the shenanigans we're doing right now in court for one of our claims. Um, I honestly think that we should be filing uh, separate charges against those lawyers, against their license to practice for abusive process and frivolous filing. Just so that these people start to know that when they defend government with these frivolous filings, that we're going to go after their bar license now. They're no longer removed from liability. Again, because the government may have told them, oh yeah, no worries, we'll assume liability for you if you go ahead and do this. No, dude. It's impossible to assume liability for somebody else. There's no such thing. So, um, that's all, I, I don't know. We can get into anything else there. I don't know if anybody's got any questions. I was gonna cut it short tonight, and then I was gonna have a parlay maybe with a couple of people online here to see uh, maybe what actual topic we should maybe schedule a whole you know, hour-long thing about where I, I get a plan together and actually detail some things for people, some learning, without getting into too much detail, because the whole problem is you can't explain to, I mean, you go, to, you go to high school for three or four years to get a degree. <coughs> is it possible for my friend to, to come up to me and say, Hey, Dean, you went to school for four years. Why don't you just summarize it for me in a paragraph, and I'll go down there and give them that, and tell them to give me a, univers or a high school degree. Okay, it's not going to happen. You know, it's, the, the whole experience was the high school degree, going through it and you know, um, doing the whole experience and learning and, and, and the process involved. So it's not just like you can just be shown something and, oh, okay, not a problem, and then go do it and expect to understand it and have it work. So we will start to set up some of the workshops. And, and again, we're still going to stick to basics because uh, a lot of the feedback I'm getting, people still don't understand a lot of even the basic concepts of what their human rights are. Um, so we'll get into all that kind of stuff. I don't know. Any questions for tonight, though? It seems like that's a, like what you were just talking about. There seems to be a, the main issue. Like I know there's a lot of different courses that are out there. People pay two hundred bucks or two grand or much more to take various law courses. Yeah. It seems like that's what we need to produce is like an ABC course, you know, or like an yeah. intro course, and then maybe some middle of the road course and some advanced course. I don't know, but you catch my drift. Yeah, I I agree with that. And, and courses is a good thing. Um, <laughs> like you know, how far you take it, of course, is another thing. That's the thing. Right on the heels of that. Okay. Uh, who are your influences and what do you uh, take uh, inspiration from? Okay, so the first one is courses and the second one is who my influences are? It okay. Seems, uh, it to fall all on the same lines if you're Yeah, no, I agree with that. So I think uh, I'm on the same path as a lot of people on the internet that have seen a lot of different theories and beliefs and have tried most of them and, and you know, nothing really works and you then you let, well, okay, well, you know, like uh, like I remember the years and years ago now, even way back in the day. I mean, some of, the, some of my first experiences with stuff online was uh, some of the, some of the accepted for value stuff. And I think in the beginning, that all ended up coming originally from somebody. Accepted for value, I think, is a theory that came off the heels of some other stuff, uh, redemption and stuff like that, that Roger Elvick was doing way back in the day. So that was some of my first. Uh, runs with that type of stuff, but then when I want, it's like, okay, well, why does that work? Like, people shouldn't expect us to write something on a piece of paper and send the bill back, and, and you know, oh, those bastards! I, I wrote accepted for value on it. They didn't do anything. It's like, well, okay. Well, did you understand why you did that? Right? Can you raise that argument if you were to contact them and say, hey, I, I wrote AFB on that. Why didn't? Why, how come you didn't zero out the accounts? And they're just gonna say, well, what made you think it would? That's the only argument they got to come back with you, and then you're just going to go, oh, oh, well, because somebody online told me to do that, right? That's, all, that's the only thing you can possibly come up with. Whereas if you read the Bill of Exchange Act, which I have, again, you'd understand in, in about an hour.